Welcome back. Week three on the horizon. Balls deep. I'm your host, Bert Finkytown. We got Dave Eddy on the line. Dave, how you doing, my friend? Oh, man, you know, Lions victory, just kind of reveling in the, in the sun of that. We've got a uh, nice little Eagles Lions this week. Oh, really? I, gee, Bert, I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Eagles, Lions in Philly. I'm thinking about going down for the tailgate. I'm in New York right now. Uh, should be a fun time. If you've never been to an Eagles tailgate, I highly recommend. Uh, it'll be a nice little uh, nice little balls deep battle of the loyal loyal squads there. Your Lions, though, 2-0. It's, uh, it could be, I wish could be we were 2-0. One. It should be 2-0, but we fucking suck. So. Are you not 2-0? We're 1-0-1. Oh. We, we tied against the Cardinals because oh, we yeah. don't know how to fucking play defense. True, true. Well, you guys don't have a loss. You don't uh, have a loss. <laughs> There's plenty coming. How'd you do this this last week, there, Dave, on the uh, on the daily? So, so this week was a little bit of a mix. So, I mean, I didn't. I, I mean, I basically broke even. I I honestly think I actually I actually did really good in my head to heads, but tournament wise, I I didn't do so hot. Uh, so, I mean, all in all, I broke fairly even. Um, but you know my 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 guys I was leading on heavy um, came through enough to not fuck me, but I didn't win all you know a whole lot. So Kamara, Kamara didn't do anything for me. Um, so I hurt a lot of people though. You beat me and to then, that one. Um, yeah, and then I had um, I was going with a lot of Oakland. Um, I was going with a lot of Oakland against KC. They did okay, like I said, they didn't they didn't kill me, but um, it wasn't the home run that I was kind of hoping for. So it, it was, you know, I didn't I didn't I didn't get my ass handed to me. So I'll take it. Your boy Kamara, I was uh, I was all off on Kamara. Didn't even cross my mind setting the lineup. You were all in on him. I was going off you off the Hawkinson pick week one. I was like, all right, he loves Kamara. I'll put him as a, my anchor. You know, my big salary guy. I would have had the winning lineup. <laughs> Alvin Kamara let me down, my friend. So you're gonna have to make it up with me for some for some picks this week, all right? Or I'm just gonna I, have I, to. I'd give you some good picks. I'm just gonna have to cut you off there. <laughs> Go do the do the fade the Eddie. But let's get down and let's get down the business here. Week three, first two weeks, you know, first week really high scoring. Second week. Not really high scoring. Uh, the studs did not come through. Oh, on Sunday, you know, you had the week games from McCaffrey, which is the Thursday game. You had the week game from Kamara. Um, but, you know, we're sharks. Uh, always looking forward. Can't go back. So let's go ahead and just start off with the, the quarterbacks. Who you like in a QB? For the showdown? For the for the showdown, not I was right. thinking I was thinking Sunday already, but you're you're right, Dave. Uh, yeah, we got to talk about the captain. We got to go with the, our Thursday game. We got the the Titans. And we've got the Jaguars, uh, which is the yeah. the recipe for a disaster. Yeah, recipe for fucking early fucking bedtime. Who's your captain? Uh, so man, this was a tough one. Um, there wasn't a lot, there wasn't anyone that I really liked this week. Um, so when I went captain, I kind of just went with the guy that I thought had the best chance of having a big week. I'm not super confident in him, but I'm actually, I cannot believe I'm going with the mustache here, but I'm going with Minshew. That, that's my captain this week. That's my guy. Oh, it's crazy. Swagger to infinity. The stash, the swag. Uh, I like it. I like it, and he's what the the fifth highest priced guy on the slate, something like that. Um, it's just I a garbage mean, game. Look, he's, yeah, he's not like dirt cheap or anything, but he's definitely not the highest. Um, I'll have to go back and take a peek. Let's see. He is. I uh, see. I'd have to. I'm not sure. He's thirteen eight as a captain. He's the fourth highest. To... He's the fourth okay. highest priced guy. It goes. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the highest priced guy. That's my captain right there. You know, I've been riding Derrick Henry the last two weeks. Uh, in this game of pure filth, we're going to throw Derrick Henry in the captain spot. I hope he scores a couple touchdowns and uh, kind of see what happens there. What are, what are your thoughts on What are your thoughts on that? You think, uh, I think I've got a shot to, to get you in because you, you beat me last Thursday. Yeah, I mean, Henry would have been 
really the only other guy that I considered. Um, it's just hard. Like, you know, I mean, that's two good defenses to begin with um, and two bad offenses. So, I mean, I don't know that I, I got the fucking guts to go with the defense in, you know, the NFL showdown for, for my pick. Um, so, yeah, I kind of was going between Henry and Minshew as well. I just kind of figured that, you know, trying trying to, you know, put points on the board, I guess if it's a coin flip, give me the quarterback over the running back. It's almost like you read my mind and we're on opposite yeah. ends of the spectrum here too because I'm going to read you the rest of my flex. Uh-huh. So we got Henry in the flex. We've got Leonard Fournette. I mean, Henry is the mm-hmm. captain. we got Leonard Fournette, Delaney Walker, Corey Davis, and then Titans and Jaguars defense. We're going to get real weird with it this week, Dave. Mm-hmm. We're going to go ahead and uh, fire up the two defenses. It just smells like a defensive touchdown game. One, maybe two defensive TDs. Um, I got them filling out the, the rest of the spot and you know praying for just some garbage. If we get some uh, defensive touchdowns and Fournette and Henry carrying the ball 20 times a pop, that could be a recipe for a showdown cash. Yeah, for head-to-head wise, I, I like it. Um, you know, I, I can definitely see those two defenses, you know, putting up points. I, I wouldn't use that in a tournament just because I don't think that, you know, that's, I don't, you know, I don't think you're going to get, you know, 30, 40 points a piece from those defenses. It'd it almost be impossible um, to do that and get, you know, your guys to score enough to, to win. But in a head-to-head, I, I can definitely see that. And <laughs> that that's kind of rare that I would say that, but this week um, – with the options you have and you're saving money by using those defenses anyways, head to head. I, I, I don't think it's terrible at all. Speaking of the head to head, you know, we'll be keep, we're keeping track of our Thursday night showdown. And, uh, you know, you got last week, but we seem to have been on a different page, you know, yeah. um, you know, we'll give you your win. It's well-deserved, but again, one of the things with, with the new podcast I was throwing my tournament line about there. So I had Brashad Perryman as my captain first year. <laughs> yeah, hey, I mean, I guess maybe a little bit of a misunderstanding. No worries. I mean, as long as it works in my favor, I'm not going to complain. Amen. I, I, like where, yeah. I like where your head's at there. and yeah. uh, But, you know, now we're going to be giving these lineups with uh, the intention of just kicking your ass and, you know, uh, just really seeing whose who's balls are the deepest in the, in the showdown here. Um, all right, all right. If you were talking a uh, tournament, though, first, well, first I want to hear the rest of your lineup against me for Thursday night. Th- then I want to hear your one guy, your one dart throw tournament captain player who could maybe win you some money. Okay. Um, so lineup, you know, I've got Minshew a captain, um, so I'm pretty much obligated to at least take, you know, the the guy I think is gonna get the most um, from him. So I'm actually going with Shark. Because I don't know who the hell else to go with. Uh, and he seems to be the best bet. So, you know, I'm going to stack those two. Um, uh, for, from there, um, the next guy that I end up going with, I went with a kicker. Because that's kind of, I guess, the way I've been doing things lately. I've been going with a kicker to get, you know, a, a, I would say, a, you know, a low floor. Or, I mean, a high floor, but it's a low ceiling. Um, so I don't mind it for head-to-head. So save a little bit of money, get some decent points. Um, and so with that money being saved, I went ahead and went with really the only two guys that were available that I felt like could, you know, give me a decent chance at points. So I have Fournette and Henry. I mean, I have the money to spend. I think it's going to be a low scoring kind of game. Uh, they're probably going to run the ball a lot, but I don't, I'm not so confident in them absolutely dominating on the ground either team. So that's why I went with Menchu at quarterback. Um, and then I had a um, decent amount of money left over. I actually left like 1200 on the table because um, with the last guy, I'm kind of trying to go for someone that I think has a chance to put up good points. And I guess if I was just, you know, all out going to try to win a showdown this week, I, I, I mean, it could actually, you know, it, it could, it's high risk, high reward. I could either you know, get in the, you know, bottom 10% of these lineups or I could win because of this. Um, but I actually like, I'm picking Humphreys. So he's really cheap. Um, I think that um, Davis is going to get shadowed by Ramsey. So if they're going to throw the ball, it's probably going to be to Walker or Humphreys if they're going to have a big day. 
I, I don't really see, you know, um, you know, Walker getting 150 yards and, you know, two touchdowns. I could see Humphreys doing that. But, I mean, possibly. So, um, you know, to answer both questions, Humphreys is my last guy for the showdown. But if I was going with a, you know, balls deep fucking guy for my captain to try to win the tournament, um, high risk, high reward, I, I guess Humphreys would be my guy. They give you plenty of money to, you know, to be able to spend almost and get whatever you want um, to fill out the rest of your lineup. Very nice. And for my captain tournament play, I'm going back to the well. Going back to my man Marquise Lee. Um, he's back practicing in full. Uh, the odds are more likely he puts up a zero than has three catches. But, hey, you know, it's it's the showdown. You kind of got to wing it. And speaking of showdown, I just thought I, I have to mention, uh, you might find interesting and in, uh, our, our listeners, so close to coming in first place on the Eagles-Falcons showdown. I had the exact lineup needed. I just had the wrong captain. I had Nelson Aguilar as the captain when Julio Jones was the captain to have it. Um, it was uh, it was a fun ride, and if Carson would have hit uh, Aguilar on that last play, if Aguilar would have caught that ball, I would have uh, shared first place with 60 other contestants, which would have been fun. Instead, uh, instead the ten dollars turned into turned into about a hundred bucks, and it was uh, still a very nice payoff. So, uh, fantasy six pack balls deep. You know, we're looking at the showdowns, and we're we're trying to we're trying to win some money together. But yeah, that's what I like about these showdowns too. You know, is you know I, I wasn't I could give a shit less about Tampa and Carolina playing each other, but you know you pick your guys and you got some guys to root for, and and then hell, you know, you get a little bit you know lucky or whatnot, and all of a sudden you know you're so invested in this game because. You know, you're, you're high in this tournament and, you know, you're rooting hardcore for, you know, some jerk off that you could care less about. You know, it's awesome, man. It's the garbage games made fun. That's what makes these showdowns exciting. That's why we want to focus on them for these podcasts. And uh, it's it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. What else are you going to do when you're watching Jags Titans, you know? So um, definitely a great pivot, but we've spent way too much time talking about these two teams uh, in what is... Again, Thursday night football, it's just, it's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace of a product. The players don't have enough time to rest. Uh, but, hey, people watch it, like ourselves. People can gamble on it. And uh, we are here, so we're going to make the most of it. Let's go ahead to Sunday here and kind of ride it down and uh, tell me who you're liking at, at the quarterback here. I, I see that your uh, the top quarterback you like is someone who I, I was all over last week. He's still the second highest priced quarterback on the board you're feeling some Lamar again this week yeah it's kind of crazy man um it's almost hard to believe uh I mean Lamar Jackson I, I don't have to you know go too into detail here but he's been awesome the first two weeks absolutely awesome um you know against teams that I guess you know you could expect it from but you at the beginning of the season I I, I wouldn't have expected it um he's got a really good matchup this week against the Chiefs I think that, you know, I do think that they're going to probably try to control the ball a little bit um, and, you know, keep that Chiefs offense off the field, which impacts some of my other picks later. But, man, if I have to go top pick for a quarterback this week, I'm, I'm still taking Jackson um, because I think I, I don't think he can obviously run the ball still. Um, he's got a couple of targets that we'll talk about that I, that I like still. So even though I think they'll try to control the clock a lot, I still think that, you know, Jackson is going to be the guy I own the most at quarterback this week. I like it. Uh, my Coming into the season, I've had a strategy of picking quarterbacks going against the Arizona Cardinals. Week one, it was Matthew Stafford, your guy. He came through for me. Last week, it was Lamar. He came through for me. This week, uh, it should have been Cam Newton. Who knows if he's going to play? And if he does, in a tournament, in that $3.20 entry, I'm going to roll with Cam. But uh, if he doesn't play, I'm going to trot out his backup. I'm going to trot out his backup, Kyle Allen, who is uh, shockingly his backup, where I thought it would be Will Greer. But it looks like Kyle Allen will get the start if uh, Cam can't go. I'm not going to lie. I don't know too much about the guy. 
but I do know that he'd be a starting quarterback versus a team that's just running a ton of plays. And at the most minimum price you can be on, on sites, he's going to allow your lineup to uh, really pack a lot of punch into it in terms of salary-wise. He'd be a, a, a great salary relief and, uh, again, great matchup. Uh, I want to stick to my strategy of targeting quarterbacks against Arizona. And, uh, you know, whoever it is, it's going to be it. So we'll try and build a lineup around that. So Yeah, I tell you what, I, I, hate, to be, I hate to be that guy, but I'm going to be a cock tease for a second. And I'm going to say that I think that I have figured out a strategy that I'm going to employ going forward. I'm not going to reveal it yet. Um, I'm going to wait a week, but um, we'll see how this week goes. And if it works out, then I will reveal my at least going forward strategy. I think you should, re- quarterback. I think you should reveal it when we make our lineup at the end of the episode. Um, well, we'll see. We, we will see. We will see. Uh, let's go ahead to, um, again, get, give me one more. So you got your favorite is Lamar. Who's your favorite tournament play? Your favorite, your your favorite, just uh, less than five percent quarterback who you think will pay off in a um, in a big tournament. I don't know that I would go less than five percent. Um, I, I I don't know what he'll be owned. I it's kind of hard for me, um, because I I have such a you know insider's view of him. But um, my sleeper for the week is Stafford. I don't I don't think that he necessarily will be less than five percent owned. But Detroit's been struggling running the ball, which doesn't shock me. But um, with you know them trying to run the ball so much, I guess it's a little bit of a surprise. But Stafford's been good this year. Um, a lot of it has been because the play action's been pretty effective and has bought himself more time than he's used to. Um, and he has some pretty nice weapons. So Stafford is who I have down as my sleeper pick. I like it. You know, that's my I, tournament guy. Talking about uh, targeting Arizona, I like targeting guys that are facing the Eagles as well. Um, and over at uh, FantasyDraft.com, I had Matt Ryan as my number one quarterback last week because it was a uh, you know a personal hedge. If Ryan would have went off, I'd win some money, but the Eagles would would most likely lose. Uh, I like Stafford this week too. He's been solid. The Eagles' defense, the defensive line, has not been getting as much pressure as they as they should. Uh, they're just getting decimated with injuries again, which is just really, really a bummer as an Eagles fan because they came in with, I believe, the most talented roster in the NFL. They're dropping like flies, and it's only been two weeks. Uh, I like the Stafford pick. And mine's actually going to be on the other end of that. Uh, Carson Wentz. Detroit's got a. Detroit's got a good defense. Eagles are down the top two wide receivers, but some guys like J.J. Arcega-Whiteside and Nelson Aguilar, they got to step up. And Carson's still got an innovative coach. He still has a healthy uh, top offensive line. Uh, He's at home as well. They kind of feed off that energy at the link. And I think he'll be owned by less than 5% of uh, players in a tournament with a lot of decent options to go. So I think Carson Wentz could be a nice little pivot, pair him up with the Zach Ertz and uh, cross your fingers in a tournament. Speaking of Zach Ertz, well, I got you here as the Lions insight. How are they against the tight end? Kind of save me some research. I mean, typically they, well, I mean, typically they suck at everything. So if you're asking a question of, if, you know, the Lions suck at, you can insert anything. And the answer is typically yes. Um, they probably suck at fucking loading the bus with their luggage. So, I mean, if you, you know, you name it and they suck at it. Um, so, I mean, to start in Ertz, yeah, well, if you're going to start Wentz, you have to start Ertz because I don't know that I can trust any of their receivers. Um, I personally don't plan on touching any Eagles this week. Um, I really think that the Lions defense is pretty good. But if I, you know, was going to consider Wentz, I would 100% pair him with Ertz. Love it. Let's move on to the running backs. Who's your must-play running back? Need him in your every lineup, whether it's tournament and head-to-head. Who's your who's your top back of the week that's going to be in your lineup? It might be way too much chalk, um, but it also may be so many points that you can't pass up. 
Um, so I'm going with Zeke. He's 8,900. Um, very expensive. I do expect him to run the ball like crazy. Um, I expect the, the Cowboys to be up, you know, a lot and early. So I, you know, my only fear, I guess, with Zeke would simply be that, you know, maybe they're up by so many points in the fourth quarter that he doesn't play so much. But, but shit, even if that's the case, he should have, you know, plenty of fantasy points. So it might be too chalky, but uh, every now and again, like, like last week, you, you, I feel like sometimes the guys are too good to pass up. Yeah, I agree. Going against just the putrid Miami Dolphins, um, I think Zeke can be a great choice. I can see him being around 40% even big tournaments. Uh, I don't disagree. But, again, if a team's going to get out to a big lead, it's got to come from somewhere, and it's a very good chance that it comes from Zeke. Um, he hasn't really burst out yet. You know, he's got that need to really just have big games and pad those stats. And uh, I like that there. I think Zeke could be a good one. Mine's Dalvin Cook. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep riding it. Um, he's just been an unstoppable force. He seems to have one of the highest floors in the league up there with the Barclays and the Zeeks. And uh, I'm not gonna say Kamara's because I'm still very bitter from last week and, and holding me back there. But I think Dalvin's earned that respect and earned his status as one of the elite fantasy guys where you can plug him in and he can expect 15-point minimum with uh, a ceiling with, with no ceiling. So what about your other running backs? Who you got as a, as a value play? Um, I mean, I like Chris Carson. Um, I think I've said that almost every week now. Um, but I like Chris Carson. Um, you know, New Orleans is hurting without Breeze. So I, you know, could see, yeah, they like to run the ball as it is, but I could definitely see them running the ball even more often, um, even if it's just simply because, you know, they've got a lead that's a game that they now should win. Um, so anytime that Seattle's got a game that they should win, I like Carson. I know we talked last week about his carries, you know, the touches getting a little bit split, but until I see that either again or fairly consistently um I, I still think chris carson is the guy there um sleeper wise i didn't really find a receiver or a receiver i didn't really find a running back that i super love that was really low so i've got a couple of guys that aren't necessarily going to save you a ton of cash but i think are very reasonably priced um i got mark ingram um so that kind of be pairing him with with jackson a lot of lineups like i said i really do think that the Ravens could try to control the ball, um, keep that KC offense off the field. Obviously, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, so I could I could see him having a decent day. He's only 5,700. I'll probably have him quite a bit. And then same thing last same thing as last week. Um, I had a lot of Sony Michelle. Again, I could see him getting a lot of carries in what should be another blowout win for the Patriots. So I could see it going a lot like last week. Um, for them just obliterating the Jets. And in that case, I think Michelle will get a whole bunch of run. Yeah, I like Michelle. I, I saw an interesting stat about Michelle that he hasn't broken one tackle so far this season on about 30 touches, which is a little concerning, especially with all the weapons that the Patriots have. I was high on Sony coming into the year. This is pre-Antonio Brown. Um We'll see. You know, it should be it should be an interesting one, and he's obviously got all the talent in the world. Um, not sure if, you know, I don't think he'll be reaching into any of my lineups in this one. But I see where your head's at with with Sony there. What about wide receivers here? Take me down the. I, I like the Ingram too one, by the way. I like. Uh, I also like that as a contrarian play because uh, you know people are gonna expect the shootout. You know they'll probably get their Marquise Browns, um, but. I think if, we should if, have a new rule. I think on this podcast, I think we, he should only be referred to as Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown? That's it. Only Hollywood. Sold. <laughs> I can I can play by those rules. I can play by those rules indeed. Uh, but I like the Ingram play because if they're going to win the game, they're going to have to control the clock. Yeah, I would imagine. I don't see him winning a shootout. No, I don't see anybody in the NFL winning a shootout. Right. Um, so Yeah, wide receivers. receivers. Um. The guys that I really like, the, the, the three guys I'll talk about quickly that I really like, 
um, are guys that probably will be fairly well owned. So, you know, it, it is what it is whenever the, I think the matchups are going to be that good. Hopkins is my number one. 7,800, top guy on the board. Um, even at, to- at 7,800, I don't think that that's a crazy price for him. Um, I think he's going to absolutely eat up this week, the Chargers defense. Um, and, you know, he got shut out. Well, not shut out, but, I mean, shut down by, by Ramsey last week, which is why I had faded him, so I have a spot on there. But this week, $7,800, any lineup that I can make myself afford Hopkins in, I'm going to take him. Um, I've got Keenan Allen at 7000 I was unbelievably impressed with him last week against Darius Slay. Um, I mean, I consider Slay to be one of the top at least five corners in the league, and I watch him on a weekly basis shut down the, the best receiver on the other team. And, I mean, Keenan Allen got the best of him last week. He didn't he didn't dominate him, but he got the best of Slay, and I don't see that often. Um, he's got a much easier matchup this week against the Texans, um, so I'm very impressed with him. And then I got Galladay um, as well. He's getting a really nice target share uh, this year. I think he should be in for a pretty good week. I said Stafford was my sleeper quarterback, so I'm going to have a lot of Stafford, and I'm, I'm going to pair him with Galladay. Very nice. Very nice. Um, do you think Slay is going to be guarding? Is, is he shadow? Is he going to be on Aguilar this week? Or is he going to, is he going to, does he play a side? Yeah, cause I, I definitely, I've seen him play a few times and he, he's really good. I think he's not talked about as much as he should be. Yeah, Slay this week, I don't think he will shadow anyone because with all due respect, um, I don't think Philadelphia has got a, a guy that is obviously the best guy. And, I mean, that's not necessarily even a knock because they have a lot of good receivers. Mm-hmm. So even if everybody, even if everyone was healthy, I think that he would just kind of play where is necessary. So I don't think he would shadow anybody. I just think he would shut down whichever side of the field he's on. Or, you know, depending on what, what, what play they're going to run, which side they need to put him on. Um, I don't think he'll shadow anybody this week. So Nelson Aguilar at thirty six hundred could be a nice value play, just as a I mean, it de facto. I mean, he's going to guard a little bit of everybody. I think. I, you know, I think they got three receivers on the field. He's not going to ever get the guy in the slot. So he's always going to take one of the two guys on the outside. So I mean, if anything, he's just going to have a little bit of everyone. So I, like I said, I wouldn't touch an Eagles player. I, I said if I had to, if I had to start somebody, I would start Ertz. But I wouldn't touch an Eagles receiver. Got it. Very nice. Well, what about tight end? Speaking of Ertz, who do you like at tight end this week? Um, so, like I said, my top quarterback is Jackson. And tight end, And until I have a reason otherwise, I'm going Mark Andrews. I, he's at 4,600. I don't think that's unreasonable. Um, I mean, Kelsey's at 7,100 this week. And then there's a huge drop-off. So, you know, Andrews is one of the higher-priced tight ends. But I don't think $4,600 is bad. And if I'm starting Lamar Jackson, if I'm putting anyone in a stack with him, it's probably at this point Andrews. Hollywood Brown would be the other guy, but it would be Andrews over him. So he's my number one tight end until he becomes too expensive um, or he stops producing. Very nice. Uh, I like me some. I like me some Evan Ingram this week. I like him catching eight to ten balls this week with the rookie quarterback of the New York Giants, Mr. Daniel Jones. Um, he's someone who I'm pretty much lock and load. If I play in a uh, Wentz lineup, I'll have Ertz in there. Maybe even go with Ertz and Engram, uh, with Engram in the flex. But uh, Evan Engram seems like, uh, at 5,200, seems like Lock City versus the Tampa Bay Bucks with a rookie quarterback. He's the best receiver on the Giants. Uh, rookie quarterbacks tend to go to their tight end, and uh, Jones looked good. Jones look good, so. Yeah, yeah. If you're, I mean, if you, especially if you ever had the balls to play Jones this week, then yeah, you obviously are pairing him with um, Ingram. Either way, I mean, Ingram isn't a bad. I would never. I shouldn't say never, but I would very rarely ever put a tight end in the flex. Um, I mean, it's happened, but I would rarely do it. So just if you were just playing Ingram all by himself, I I don't have a problem with that because, like you said, rookie quarterback, um, you know probably is going to rely on dumping it off to Barkley and, you know, a shorter passing game with Ingram. So uh, it makes sense. 
I think Evan Ingram is a wide receiver who dresses up. His his fetish is dressing up as a tight end. So he kind of like disguises it. He's someone, one of the few guys who I would probably play alone. Again, Kelsey's probably one of them as well. Uh, maybe Ertz, but yeah, I agree. It might limit the upside a little bit, but I, I think that it can give you a decent floor in a cash game. So let's sure. go. Let's go ahead. Uh, you know, we'll talk about defense when it comes to it when we decide our lineup. But uh, I don't believe we cashed last week with our with our lineup. You'd have to tell me. I was looking to bring it up right now, and again, we should have had it up coming in, but uh, I I we we did not we did not cash. Uh, but let's put the pass behind us again. We'll we'll go through more often than not and uh, describe our lineups and how we kind of did with that. But uh, don't have it up here. Can't seem to to find it on the, the DK. And uh, just gonna assume that we lost because that's typically what what happens here on uh, daily fantasy sports. The impossible happens. We definitely did yeah, not only, play Demarcus the only Robinson. Thing I can suggest that I can I can put the same lineup. That we have in a lineup on my end as well. Yeah, so we should. I, right now, I can't pull it up. You know, with it being under you. Yeah, we should do that. We should both put the same lineup in the in the three dollar one. I think that'd be fun. And if it and if it hits, we both reap the benefits. Yeah, or we can just double dip and we can put it in two different tournaments and you know maybe you know I don't know. Maybe, uh, I, we'll figure it out. We'll uh, figure it out. We'll figure it out. But let's go ahead and uh, let's get this lineup here. I wanna. I, I'm really big on Engram. So I'm going to start this joint lineup by putting him as the tight end. I know okay. you like your Hawk. How do you feel about Engram here just as our tight end spot? Uh, we can start there. I think that's just a, a nice place to kind of start pivoting in other directions, and I think he's got an incredibly safe floor with a super high ceiling. Um, quarterback. See, quarterback's tough because... Don't forget, it's the three dollar. It's the three dollar one. So it's the home run. It's the home run of home runs. So the guy that I would volunteer, and I'm sure that you will tell me we're going in a different direction, but I would put in Stafford. Sold. Really? Against your okay. Sold. I you'd tell me to go. You know. Go fuck yourself. Go play in traffic or something. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's cool. You didn't know I could curse like that, did you? Oh, no, I knew you could. You know, if you told me, hey, I want to start Wentz this week, I, I probably would just unplug my mic and, you know, retire from Fantasy Six Pack. I wouldn't even give you an answer. I'd <laughs> no. just fucking be done, man. Uh, when it comes to fantasy, I'm an even minded guy. And again, their pass rush has been non existent. Teams have been thrown on them. They're typically in high scoring games. And uh, I'm down with Stafford there. And if he does blow up, I'll be sad from an Eagle standpoint. <laughs> but my wallet could be happy. So, right, um, right, right. I, I know you like Galladay. Yeah, I was going to say, if we go Stafford, we don't have a choice. We have to go Galladay. Something so tells me I've got a tingling Marvin Jones feeling, Dave. I would not, no. no okay. I, I would stop. The only other guy that I would pair those two with with a stack would be Hawkinson. We've already got Ingram in there. I, I don't want to put Hawkinson at the flex unless we run into money problems later. Galladay so it honestly, is. I'm honestly fine with those two. Sure. Well, I've got a I've got a running back here who's very lowly priced compared to what he was week one. We haven't discussed him yet, but he's someone I really liked preseason. It could be a decent matchup if he's healthy. Joe Mixon's mm-hmm. coming in at fifty five hundred. Okay, um, I actually considered Mixon for one of my top picks, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, he was I think he was really hurt last week, um, and he was just d- disgustingly bad. Um, this, and I'm almost talking myself out of it, just like I talked myself out of putting him in lock. And I think the Buffalo defense is good. However, Mixon, to me, is one of the – I mean, this is, might sound crazy, um, but just pure talent-wise, I think he's one of the top five running backs in football. Um, it's Cincinnati he absolutely reeks on offense. So if someone's going to blow it up, I could I could get behind Mixon. He's a really good value. Um, so, yeah, I, I, actually, I actually have zero problem with that. I don't disagree. And uh... – it could either be a really good value, or it could just be a, a a ploy to get suckers like you and I to put them into the lineups. But yeah, again, but I think with the three dollars that we're doing and we're kind of going for home runs, I think Joe Mixon is going to be very low owned. So if he has you know a uh, hundred yards, two touchdowns, and you know catches four balls for fifty yards, I I think that's just gold. I know that's a lot to ask, but I'm just you know I'm just saying 
a guy that's probably going to be fairly low owned but has that kind of ceiling. Next up, someone who's been underproducing as well. Uh, I think it's another nice, cheap guy who could have a big upside. Devontae Freeman's has been really bad, but he gets a Colts offense. He gets a Colts defense in Indianapolis, so they got the dome action. Um, Forty nine hundred on DraftKings. Um, I think that's someone that he could consider in in a flex spot, or we can go ahead and we can fill in Zeke. We can even play both of them because I, I like to have a running back in in both. Although it typically doesn't win these big tournaments because those ones it comes down to someone playing four different receivers that just pop off. But uh, what, are, what are your so, thoughts on Devonte? So so I'll, I'll counter your Devonte because I just don't see him having a huge week. Um, I mean, if, if we're going for the gusto and trying to win this thing, I, I do think $4,900 is a nice price, but I still don't want to touch Freeman. Me personally, I would rather spend $1,100 more and go for a guy that I wouldn't even be shocked if he scored four rushing touchdowns next week. I'm Sony Michelle. <laughs> I, I think 6000 for him is, is perfect. I know that the Patriots are typically, you know, hit or miss. I just see them having the exact same game plan that they had last week. Um, I mean, they're almost playing, you know, a team that's in just as bad shape. They're going to blow them out of the water. And I, I could just see Michelle running the ball just down their throats and could easily score four touchdowns. I mean, that, that, that would be my pick for sure. So how about we go Sony and Zeke? Ooh, I don't know if we can afford that. We, we, we definitely we, we definitely can, but sit. let's 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 hold off there. Let's get the the flex will be our last guy. Um, I, I'm I'm in to go back to the Sony train here because uh, what do I have to lose besides three dollars? I think I just could see Mixon and Michelle could both have a huge week. I think more so Michelle, um, and they're not really expensive. I mean, if you look at who we have in here, I guess Ingram's a little pricey, but whatever. But Galladay's not not pricey. Mixon's not pricey. Michelle's not pricey. Stafford's not pricey. It's a little bit different than what we're used to with you know grabbing some you know high end guys and then trying to hit a home run on a super cheap guy. Um, so I, I I like it, man. Amen. I like it so far. We'll see where it ends up. You know, we we may change our mind here, but so far so good. So we have our core. We have to fill two wide receivers and a flex. Let's get our defense in there so we can kind of see what we're working with for our, our final three spots. Um, I'm looking at it right now. I always scroll to the bottom immediately and yeah, and, and go up. Um, and I tell you, for me, I'll just for for me this week, um, I did not find one defense that was too low owned that I liked. The biggest argument that I could make would be the Cardinals at 2,700, just because I'm afraid of Cam Newton. But I don't really like that pick. Um, so I don't really see a defense here that I think we could easily save money on. Um, so for me this week, if I, I really don't think that I will have a defense other than the Patriots. They're the second highest um, salary-wise, and they'll probably be owned a lot. But, I mean, I don't know that the Jets are going to score. The New England might score while the Jets are on, de- on offense, but I don't think the, the Jets will score while the Jets are on <laughs> offense. So, and, I, I, I mean, there's just nobody that is lower than them that I like this week. I just don't like a single defensive matchup at all this week. The Cowboys being 4-300 to 300 is absurd. The uh, the Eagles coming in as the third highest priced defense is interesting. It is interesting. I don't know how that would work, but okay. We definitely, we definitely can't play them with our lineup. I'm just pointing out that would be a uh, – it, it's just – it's an interesting price, you know. Well, that's like I thought last week. It was interesting that the Chiefs, who are absolutely atrocious on defense, were the fourth highest priced defense. Did they... I would have to guess they were less than one tenth percent owned. I mean, who the hell would have fucking paid up for the Chiefs' defense? Did they come through? I mean, I didn't. I didn't ever own them, so I couldn't tell you how many points they scored. But I, I, I don't know who the hell. You'd have to be drunk, deaf, or stupid to, to click on the Chiefs defense last week. <laughs> well, I got one here. 
Uh, they're, you know, on the upper third of the available defenses, but we should still have decent salary. What do you think about Seattle at home against Teddy Bridgewater as a kind of contrarian-esque, uh, low-owned, which is what you're hoping for. Maybe they get a pick six from Teddy. You yeah, also got the Niners. Like I said, there's, there's nobody that I really like, like I said, that low. Let's go um, to Patriots. Let's go to Patriots. We got Sony. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, if we have to drop some money, I guess we can. But I just there's nobody else I think that I will own defensively this week. I just just nobody else I could I could see owning. Let's do it. Let's let's eat the chalk there and move yeah. on and move on to wide receiver. Um, so we've got about 5,800 available per mm-hmm. person. Uh, 1740 total, and uh, we got to find our, our our receivers here. So uh, we've got Stafford. We've got Gaudet. Well, let me ask you this then. To try to save a little bit of money and see if maybe we can sneak Zeke in there. Maybe we can't, but just throwing it out there. Feel free to tell me I'm crazy. The guy that I was kind of in on last week and had some ownership in and literally did nothing, um, I kind of am in the same boat again this week where if I need to save money, I'm willing to give him a shot. And I think that with his salary of $3,000 that he could pay big dividends. And I'm going to suggest Dion Kane. I know absolutely nothing about him. Please tell me okay. more. So, so Dion Kane, um, number two receiver behind T.Y. Hilton in Indy. Um, Brissett hasn't been that bad. Um, he got a ton of snaps last week. He was second in snaps um, behind Hilton. He just didn't catch a ball. So, I mean, that's a number two receiver on – not the worst offense ever um, at $3,000. So To me, that's, that's a home run opportunity. Worst case scenario, we, I don't know. I mean, you can never go wrong with saving money, but uh, he could be another dud and get you another zero. But, hey, if I'm going to miss, I'll, I'd rather miss for 3000 Sold. And I'm, pl- I'm plugging Zeke in the flex. Okay. And that leaves us with... 5500 for our final wide receiver. I okay, scroll down he- I scroll down here. The top options available are John Brown 5500, Josh Gordon 5400, Calvin Ridley at 5300, uh, which I could be very yep. in on. Yep, I, I I think I've heard my guy already. Let's just stop it there with Ridley. Yeah, I I, I had I, I made a lot of money with Ridley early last year when he was super cheap. No, very nice, and I think he's the real deal. So we're going yeah. with Matthew Stafford, Joe Mixon, Sony Michelle, Kenny Galladay, Dion Kane, Calvin Ridley, Evan Engram, Zeke Elliott in the flex, and the Patriots defense entered for three dollars. Yeah, I think that's got a potential. I mean, I guess I'm going to say that every week. I just put together a lineup, and I was going, "Yeah, dude." I'm just going to piss this away. Yeah, I hope it's not like, oh, you know, yeah, this one's awful, but we're going to play it anyway. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I'm not super excited about Deion Kane, but when you look at the rest of that lineup, I think you've got big potential everywhere, and I don't even hate Deion Kane. So, yeah, I like that one. All you need are two catches from the guy, and uh, oh, God, he can yeah, come back just value. Give me 50 yards and a touchdown, and that's the best $3,000 you're ever going to spend. Yeah, not even. Say he just gets three catches for 50 yards. That's eight points, and that's mm-hmm. almost that's almost value there. Yeah. Um, so. I think that could be a, that could definitely be a play. So that was and a fun I don't think one. He's going to be very highly owned either. The guy's got three targets all year. Oh, he'll be nothing. He'll be not owned at all. No, his snap count's high, and they don't show that on DraftKings. So that's not necessarily insider information. But for someone who is going off of the information that DraftKings give them, nobody's going to be like, "Oh yeah, Deion Kane. Oh yeah, I'll pay a thousand dollars per target this year, this week." No, I'm all I'm all in on that. So I, I love the thought process. It was an easy sell, and uh, I, I like it as a as a as a, uh, a deep threat, a deep uh, balls deep play of the week. Deion Kane. I might have to look at him more, and if I need to build lineups and just get a a swinger in these uh, the twenty entry three dollar bit, then uh, I could see myself rocking with some Deion Kane there, and we could be rooting for him together. So uh, I think that could be good. Any closing thoughts here? Uh, any comment on my head-to-head win of last week there? 
Uh, I don't really, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't, I don't seem to remember that. Also, uh, I guess I, I can't say a whole lot about that. Um, you know, one thing I felt really bad about this, um, and, I, and I realized this a little bit earlier when, when you and I were talking. I totally meant to bring this up last week, um, and I didn't. I brought it up a lot in week one, and I'll be damned if I won't bring it up this week. And I can, I would expect at some point. You're going to hear this every single week, and I don't even care if it gets old. But one thing I forgot to say last week was, fuck you, Eric Ebron. That dude is a piece of shit, and I'm so pissed that he scored a touchdown last week. Um, but I just wanted to be well-known and continue to be well-documented that Eric Ebron can go balls deep in himself. Hell of a human being. Great man. Yeah, great, great fucking guy. He'd make a really good fucking... I don't even. I don't even know. So I hate that guy. So oh, much. oh, the lovely voice of a Lions yeah. fan. It's he uh, really good in fucking prison orange. It feels so good to uh, have that hate removed from me once the Super Bowl came. Uh, once the <laughs> Eagles, once the Eagles won it all, it's just like, yeah, it's all good, man. No problems. <laughs> so, Dave, it's been a pleasure, man. Good luck this week. Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking shit and. Uh, I'm expecting another dub for Finkytown on the Thursday night, Sunday night, and uh, the Monday night sweep. I'm I'm gonna win all three for me this week, guaranteed. Well, you, might, you might call in sick next week for this podcast when you go win three, bud. <laughs> Take it easy, Dave. Thanks all for right, listening, man. everybody.